everybody, welcome to That's Good Broncos. Not so great tonight, now is it? Because the Broncos lost their second game in a row to the San Diego Chargers, 21 to 13. Uh, a, a lot of things happened, and most of them were bad. Uh, I'm gonna start off with the thing that I think really cost the Broncos the game, and that is penalties, mental mistakes. There were 12 penalties during the game. That is, uh, that's always hard to overcome. Many of those penalties were on the offensive line, holding, false starts, things that every time the, the Broncos offense had momentum, it just got shit on by a penalty. CJ Anderson's touchdown gets called back for a penalty. Was it the right call? Yes, but did I want to punch that ref in the fucking face? I really did. And what I need to know is what did C.J. Anderson do to the offensive line? Because three of their penalties were when he was rushing the ball. I think they might have had a, a bit of a tiff. Some sort of, I don't know, C.J. stole something from them. Maybe food, because they're big guys and they take their food very seriously. I don't know, but I felt like every time C.J. had a good run, it was called back for a, for a hold. Um, the next thing that killed the Broncos were the wide receiver fumbles. Jordan Taylor and Demarius Thomas both fumbled the ball. Chargers recovered. Th Thomas has killed any chance the Broncos had to win because it was in the final minutes of the game there. Uh, McManus missed a, a very long 57-yard field goal, but had he made that, maybe the Broncos can handle the end of the game a little bit different. I'm not, I'm not going to put it on, on his foot, though, if you will. <laughs> And then the holding call in the end zone for the safety. Oh my God, that, that ruined it because Chargers go from 19 to 21 and that changes the way the Broncos have to score to win that game. Luckily, I think Joe DiCamilla, DiCamillis uh, told the Broncos to punt it short, which if he did was a brilliant call because the guy trying to catch the ball doesn't usually field punts, fumbles it, the Broncos recover it, they're able to stay in the game. So that was a nice call. Uh, I think coming into this game, we were we were drinking the Kool-Aid. And that Kool-Aid tasted good. We said Donald Stevenson coming back. Oh, Virgil Green coming back, yeah. Trevor Simeon playing, they're gonna win. Well, guess what? That offensive line, even with Stevenson back, isn't great. Uh, I think he had two of the penalties. He definitely had a personal foul penalty that didn't help. So uh, I think we overestimated the impact of their return. I think this offensive line just isn't that good and that's affecting so much of what the Broncos are trying to do offensively. That first half, that was one of the worst offenses, offensive performance is, uh, we've seen in a while. Um, and I think the thing that bothered me the most is when the game cut away it just cut away right before matt leblanc is taking on his most challenging role yet i'm going back to work yay daddy's in charge now fatherhood that's the last fucking thing we need to see matt leblanc and we come back and a keep to leave's got a penalty uh if we didn't see it it didn't happen Although somebody said Mac Le Matt LeBlanc was the least funniest of the, the friends. In my opinion, he was the funniest because uh, I, I don't like that show. So I don't know why CBS did that. I think it was their way of trying to save uh, his show from being canceled. Um, and then at the end of the game, we've got a Hail Mary situation and Trevor Simeon throws it way too short. I think maybe you know, he throws that into the end zone. Looks like DT had to step there. I don't know if he actually had to step or if the defender already noticed that the ball was short, but you got to take your shots there. Uh, I know a lot of you are probably going to be bitching about Simeon. I don't think this is on him. I'm not saying he played great, but I think there were too many players on the offense making mistakes to really pinpoint it to one. We can say collectively they just shit the bed. And I'm going to leave you with this because the Broncos dedicated this game to Gary Kubiak, you know, because he wasn't there. He had the complex migraine condition. How shitty does it, how shitty does it feel if your team dedicates the game to you and then they play like shit? Dedication doesn't mean much, then does it? All I'm saying, if you're going to dedicate a game to your head coach, 
You go out and you win the fucking game for him. At the very least, he deserves that. And now I gotta figure out a way to shit on Philip Rivers. Which is the, that's the, the, the hardest part about this because he played pretty good. He didn't do anything too crazy. There's a lot of shots of him making weird faces. I can deal with that tomorrow. But now I gotta, I gotta write some bad poetry by Philip Rivers and he won. That makes my job harder. And I don't like when my job is harder. And we're about to leave, but for some reason I have a feeling a surprise guest is going to show up. You gonna close this out or what? I was hoping you could see my PJs on this. <laughs> you gonna close this out? The play callers and Schofield. Those are the two problems. The what? Schofield. Schofield. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you can't pinpoint Schofield. All I of do. the offensive linemen screwed up. That's it. We'll see what happens. We'll see how the Broncos bounce back after this. Uh, do we panic? I don't know. We haven't had to do it for so long. I forgot how to fucking do it. Thanks for watching another episode of That's Good Broncos. Make sure you subscribe here. Give me a follow on Twitter at Brandon Perna. Uh, I like tweeting during the games, and the more you guys tweet to me, the more fun it is. And uh, as always, make sure you, you give some love to the Mile High Report, the biggest Broncos blog of them all.